Gibson, the host of Keeping It Real and publisher of NewSpiritJournal.com. Welcome, and today I have a treat for you. If you're like me, I'm sure that you look at the youngsters who are on the planet right now thinking to yourself, well, I wonder who they're going to grow up to be, and I wonder how they're going to handle this world that they're inheriting, because there sure seem to be an awful lot of issues that those of us who are adults right now can only do so much about. Well, there's a young lady by the name of Muskan Verk who has written a book called 365 Days of Gratitude. She lives in Vancouver, BC, Canada, and she is 10 years old. So we're going to talk with Muskan and ask her about her book and about her ideas about the planet right now and see if we can get some insights into what she thinks those of us who are adults should do at this point in time. Hi, Muskan. So happy to meet you. <laughs> I'm so happy to meet you too, Crystal. Well, I've read your book, 365 <laughs> Days of Gratitude, and um, you're 10 years old. So the first question is, how did a 10-year-old young lady end up writing this book? Well, I ended up writing this book because I got, um, like, my trigger, it was gender inequality. And the reason I heard this at the age of six is because there was a flyer that my grandmother, like, she just brings things from our temple, and there was a flyer on her table. And I looked at it, and, I, and what caught my eye is the only thing that was in English was uh, the date, which was October 20th. And I was like, yay, that's my birthday. So I was like, mommy, they're probably doing something on my birthday. So then I took it to my mom, and um, she just looked at it and put it away, and I took a bath. And, what, and finally, I sat her down, and I said, mom, what does this say? And she says that it said it, that it's about gender inequality and how some people like boys more than they like girls. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I said, okay, so then what happens? And then the title was said, don't kill girls in the womb. So then she says, well, sometimes then she was trying to say it so I could understand it, but there was nothing else to be said. She says, then sometimes they get killed in the womb. They kill girls in the womb because they don't want to have a girl. Right. And then I said, so I looked at her and then I ran upstairs and I started crying like crazy. Mm -hmm. And then after about 30 minutes, I wiped my eyes and I was like, mom, you know, I'm going to do something about this. And she's like, okay. So she says, what do you want to do about it? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> right. Because I, this was very new. I just knew I wanted to change it. Right. So then a few days later, a UN declared International Day of, like, International Day of Women. And I said, Mom, what's that? And she says, oh, they wanted to celebrate women. So I was like, okay. So then Malala, she came and she spoke at, and she received her Nobel Prize. And I'm like, who's that? What she's getting? Why is that? <laughs> and, she, and my mom said, this is a girl that did something really good, so they're giving her a prize for it. I'm like, oh, okay. So then after, uh, after school, we were just killing some time between my activities, and I saw Malala's book in the chapters, and I was like, Mommy, get it, get it, get it, get it. <laughs> so then she got it for me, and then she started reading it to me every day. And some parts of her story are really scary, and some parts of, of her explaining what happened. Right. Some yeah. pictures in there are scary, too. But... Then some t days I was really wanting to read it, and some days after she said something really bad, I said, "Mom, put it away. I want to go to, uh, go to bed." So then I I said, "You know what? This is what I want to do it about." So I went to school and I talked to our teacher that organizes the like the found of uh, for the like fundraisers. Uh huh. And, yeah, and I want to say I said to her that this is what I want to do. I want to do this, and I want to do it by doing this. Right. So then she's like, oh, okay. So she called my mom, and she's like, are you okay with this? And my mom's like, yeah, go ahead. 
So then I um, raised money by getting giving my birthday money, all my birthday money, and I gave it to the Malala Fund. And I also raised money by selling popcorn and bracelets that are class made. That's wonderful. And you raised, what, I think $1,200? Am I remembering yeah. that right? Yes. And so how did that work into then... Um, cause then, cause I have read your book. So from that is how you got into writing the gratitudes every day. Well, then after I did that, I still didn't feel happy. Right. So then I started looking at everything negatively. Right. So I come home from school and be like, mom, um, I did really bad in this subject and now I'm going to stink at that subject for the rest of my life. <laughs> and then... My mom said. Uh, my mom started noticing that I kept complaining about what was bad. So then she told me to write in a journal what I was grateful for. So every day I wrote what I was grateful for, and then after a year and a half, I came back to her and I said, "Mom, guess how many things I'm grateful for?" And she says, "How many?" And I said, "Four hundred and fifty-five." <laughs> and she was like, "Wow." So then she started reading through them, and sometimes she got emotional because they were so little and so profound, like, right. I'm grateful for ice cream, mm -hmm. or uh, I'm grateful for my grand uh, for my nana because she always knows what I like to eat, and she always makes it for me, <laughs> and she gives the best hugs. <laughs> so then she, my mom said that, you know what, we should, you know, we should, like, publish this to inspire other people to be grateful for what they have. Mm -hmm. And that's how we have this book. And it's a beautiful cover. It's really a beautiful, it's a wonderful little book. I thoroughly enjoyed reading it. It's really good. And, and I like the simplicity of it because I think a lot of times people think to be grateful, it always has to be big stuff. And it doesn't. Like you said, it can be ice cream, you know, or a hug. Um, and I learned a lot about you. Like you like to play chess. And you like to get up early. <laughs> but I did have a question. I'm really curious from your viewpoint. What do you think is like the biggest problem facing the world or the biggest challenge facing the world right now? And what do you think adults need to do about it? Well, I think that everyone needs to know about it. And I think it's just like being grateful for the things around you mm -hmm. and be having love and compassion and I think that's the biggest problem in the world and then we don't we won't have that many fights mm -hmm. and I think that it's just like uh, we need gratitude in the world and everyone should learn how to be grateful so the world is a happy place <laughs> and so do you think what, what adults should do is work harder at being more grateful um, well, I think that it doesn't really take hard work. You just need to find what you're grateful for every day. And maybe write it down. Yeah. I think it's a good thing when we write things down because don't you think it's easy to forget things when you don't write it down? Yeah, and then after you can come back when you're having a bad day and you can read through what you're grateful for to make you yeah. happy. Exactly. Now, I'm real curious if you believe, do you believe in reincarnation? Pardon me? Do you believe in reincarnation? Yes, I do. So do I. So I'm really curious because you're so young. I mean, you have to admit not many 10-year-olds have a book out. <laughs> do you think that you were a writer in a past life or that you've already been a teacher or thing? Have you thought about that? Well, my, everyone always says, like, rich people always say that I'm an old soul. So I think I was a writer in my, in my past life. I think so too, I, and I think that you, I think you decided to take up your career a little earlier this time, <laughs> getting out there and to help teach. Now tell us about your nonprofit called Helping Hands. So Helping Hands happened at the same time that I conceived my book. So, and just one day in the car, I was just telling my mom that, you know what, when I get older, I want to have my own organization. And she's like, so what do you want to do? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> like, when you're six years old, you just come up with an idea, and someone asks you, why did you come up with an idea? And you're like, I have no clue. I just wanted to do it. <laughs> so then I, so I was trying to find out what I wanted to do for my organization. And then um, 
and then it, we were in the car, and we have a thing called we 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 day in Canada, and um, so this man was talking about how he became homeless. So when he was uh, eight, when he was eighteen years old, I believe eighteen, yeah. Um, his father was involved in alcohol and drugs, and, and um, he just wasn't there to support the family. And um, his mother was like, he, he, she was fine, but and then the son he got involved in doing drugs, alcohol, and he would stay out all night, and he'd come home very late. And he'd come and he'd see his mom sitting on the couch waiting for him. And he said, why are you sitting here? She's like, I just wanted to see you. Mm-hmm. So then, like, he was like, okay, whatever. So then one day he stayed out all day and came back very, very, very late. And he saw his mother's couch sitting outside. And his neighbor came out of, it, uh, of his house and said, didn't you know your mother died of cancer? Oh, no. So then I was like, you know what? That's what I want to do it on. I want to help people who are just becoming homeless. So, like, this is the rich, and they're, like, up, just about to fall over. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't be able to hold their hand then. So I told my mom if someone was there to hold his hand and help him, he would have been fine. Right. He would have had another chance at a good life. So I said, that's what I want to do about it. So then my mom dropped me off home. She went to go run some errands. And then I found a box, and my mother had given me a Christmas a Christmas ornament for Christmas. And I had that box, and I uh, made a logo, and that said, Helping Hands. Mm-hmm. And then it said, uh, the box said, Please help us today by giving a donation. And then my mom came home. And she looked at the box, and she was just about to throw it away. And I was like, Mommy, don't throw that away. That's my, found, that's my organization. So then she looked at it, and she's like, so this is what you want to do? I'm like, yeah. So then now I have my own organization called Helping Hands. And so people donated to it. And, and from the sale of this book, you're donating some of the money to, to yeah, your I'm organization. Yeah, I'm donating some of the money from the sales of my book, yes. Right. And then so you'll use that money to help people who are maybe almost homeless or... Something like that. You're not quite sure yet how you're going to help them? Yeah, it's a very new organization, so we're still trying to figure out how we're going to actually do it. But when I was in L.A. on, like, Christmas time Uh last year, yeah, I went to the Midnight Mission, which is in L.A. on Skid Row. And I, um, I gave the homeless people, I sang the homeless people a song, I talked to them, and I served their meal, and I gave them a note, like, in an envelope, it said, on the top, it says, dear human, and then inside it says, you're loved, and my mom Mm -hmm. said, so why do you want to do this, and I said, oh, it's because I want to tell them that they're loved, and that they don't really hear it that much, (laughs) so I want to tell them that I love them, and people around them do love them, too. That's wonderful, and I'll bet you they hold on to those notes for many years to come. And I'll bet it means a lot to them. So you're traveling now on, you're, going to, you're doing a book tour, and you're going to be in Seattle yes. in April. And you're going to be at, let's see, you're going to be at Seattle Unity on Friday night, the 14th, and at East West Bookshop on Saturday, the 15th. So um, in Seattle Unity, I'm uh, I'm um, speaking uh, at um, like a talk that is called uh, um, Authenticity and Gratitude, yes. and I'm speaking with the CEO and co-founder of Aligned Ed- Education. Her name is Mickey O'Brien, mm-hmm. and she's one of Seattle's leading leading for autism mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and so do you have any experience with that do you have friends who are who are autistic uh yes i do have a, like i have there's some people um that i've encountered so like at my old taekwondo place mm-hmm. there was a boy who was autistic and i used to help him a lot and it was really fun because i got to um experience that 
Yes, I read in your book that you're you're working for your black belt. Yes, I am. How far along are you? I'm a first degree, and I, I stopped at first degree to focus on some other activities. Wow, so you are really a busy little girl. My goodness. Yeah. Besides school? I also, yeah, I also sing, uh, play the piano, and play the guitar. So how many hours are you awake every day? <laughs> um... Probably 16, maybe 17, I don't know. You get Somewhere up, around there. So you get up really early and do a lot of things before you go off to school and then do things after school? Yeah. You must be good at time management, are you? That's all my mom. Oh, is it? <laughs> Does mom, mom takes care of the time management and you just show up? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's pretty good. So do you have anything to say to children who might be watching this? Well, I'm going to say that be unique and be you and also focus on the little things in life and that surround you and have gratitude, love, and compassion for everyone who cares about you and the things that you love. That's a great message. Well, I'm certainly grateful that you've written your book and that you're out there promoting your message. Because I agree with you, it's really important, and more of us need to do that. Yes. We really do. So, well, thank you for being here. Do you have anything else you'd like to say to our viewers? Well, I want to say that be you, be unique, and be grateful for everything. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Crystal, for having me. What a delightful young lady is Muskan, and I certainly wish her the best. And didn't she say it all? Gratitude, compassion, be yourself makes me kind of think of my show, Keeping It Real, because that is really what she's talking about, is being true to ourselves, being grateful for the things that are in our world, having compassion for other people, and being real. So I thank her for being here. I thank you for watching, and I will see you at my next show. Keep it real. Music